after the, those talks from very clever people, we're going to talk a, do a talk a bit easier. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, what is going to be shipped in VLC 4.0. Um, if you were at FOSDEM, which you should have been, this is like basically, in, at FOSDEM I said, well, we're going to do that, and this is, well, this is what we actually done. Um, <laughs> we're not that far, but you know. So just a bit of few stuff about 3.0. Um, veterinary, uh, a lot of comments, like probably one of the largest release. Not so much visible, right? A lot of stuff that we've been doing is related to hardware decoding, hardware filtering, and lots of small stuff, improving a lot of formats. But for the people, they don't see that much different, except that it's faster. Um, it was quite a good release because we merged a lot of code base from the mobile port and so on, and, and did a lot of work on, on the, the APIs. Um, Hardware decoding, 360, you know the shit, 10 bits, uh, of course, correct, passable audio, lots of the, the, the usual, all the stuff that everyone will complain about VLC, yes, for example, and so on. Most of the stuff we have actually done. Um, um, we have already shipped more than 100 million binaries from Vidolan.org. Um, Zero dot three that was out for three months uh, as a main release. It was around 62 million, uh, which is good, right? Because that's of course outside of the desktop port, outside of download.com, and of course outside of the various app stores. So, for that zero, what's in it? So this is a slide I had uh, at, at first time. I really copied it. Um, um, so new input, new playlist. New media library, new interface, uh, new video output architecture, VR3, and dropping all platforms. Ah. This is what we have. Um, so, as you can see, new input place is more or less okay. I added something which is clock, which is in fact more complex than we thought. Um, media library, um, interface a bit behind, that's why it's in orange. And then we have the new video output architecture, which is uh, not started, um, or at least very far from being merged. Um, and VR 3D, more or less okay. So, I think we are pretty much good on it. Um, uh, so I'm going to explain exactly what we're going to do, or what we've been doing. So let's start with 360 and VR. So in 3.0 we had the 360 support, so tube map, equi rectangular, based on OpenGL, the projects are correctly done, direct uh, uh, hardware decoding directly to the surfaces and so on. And we have this uh, 3D, um, um, or third order uh, Ambisonic 3D engine, uh, which is like great because there is no samples, uh, because YouTube only does first order. Um, but still, we have it. Uh, but that also <coughs> brought like, uh, a lot of cool stuff like uh, neural, uh, binaurization on VLC. Okay. Yeah, so if you were at IBC last week, which you should not have, um, <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen that, which is actually a demo of VLC VR. Uh, so the different part is that it's actual on the HMDs, head mounted displays, for those who don't know. Um, and what you can see here is um, a Vive on, on Linux, a Vive on Windows, uh, an Oculus, no, no, that's the Oculus, right? Yeah. Oculus, Vive on Linux, Vive on Windows. Uh, and the PSVR on, um, on Linux. Um, it actually works without the SDK, because what we're doing is directly talk with the, directly on the USB uh, to talk to the headsets, and of course we do directly the projection directly. Uh, we use a, 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 an awesome library called OpenHMD uh, that is uh, doing a lot of work, and we've been helping them to, to do that. Um, it works. Uh, not easy to do, uh, to set up, but once you manage to set up, it works fine. You, so you have two modes, uh, which you can't see here. The first mode is basically normal 360 video that you see. Uh, and the second one is like a movie theater. Um, so we've been coding, well, someone, Alexandre, I don't know if he's here. Uh, you'll see him tomorrow at the lighting talk. Did a very small uh, 3D engine that is basically taking FBX objects and basically render that. Uh, and so if you watch a 2D movie, well, you have a full 3D movie theater with a movie over there. Um, it might be useful, might not be, but it's really cool to at least to do good demos. Um, and the code is also very clean, right? It doesn't destroy the whole VLC architecture to get that, uh, which is nice. Um, we will have the same for Android. Uh, iOS, I don't know, but Android, it should be easy to port. Um, so uh, that's more or less working. It needs to be merged. Um, the support for 3D also should be merged. 
uh, quite easily. Uh, I think there is a branch. I think Steve is already starting spamming us, um, <coughs> sending patches on the mailing list for that. So VR, I think we're good. I'm using a Mac that's way slow, right? Yes. Okay. Input manager, right? The stuff that no one wants to touch. Uh, the playlist mess that we've had and has not been touched in 2009. When was the last release rewrite? Zorglub? Maybe? Jakob? Or something like that, right? So, a lot of mess, right? And no one wants to touch it because it's boring work, right? Um, and especially the problem that we had is that the playlist was doing everything. It was doing a browsing, like for service discoveries, for UPnP. It was holding the, the log on audio output, video output. It was doing basically everything, right? And touching that was horrible. Uh, and we said, well, we're going to do that and rewrite a playlist that is actually <coughs> a playlist, not something very complex with three and five and uh, five different ways of storing items in it. Um, yeah, it's mostly done. Um, Thomas has been doing amazing work with Roma. Uh, you could see the mailing list on that. Um, everything is really good to get merged. We have an input manager that makes sense. Um, it's very close to the libvlc and the libvlc core APIs are similar, so people who are using the libvlc are going to have more or less the same behavior as the one which we have, and not very different stuff. We solved a lot of the issue about the uh, event mess, uh, where you didn't know what events they were. Uh, and also, like the input manager is actually holding the resources of audio and video output, which means that we are going to get playbacks in both in DLC. Japless. Finally. Uh, people have been asking for that since, I don't know, maybe 2003? Maybe, right? Um, so that's good. Um, and also, privatizing a lot of the APIs that modules shouldn't touch. So that's good. And another stuff I didn't talk about for them that we actually did with one week of vacation in uh, Palma de Mallorca, something. Like, it was actually work. So we've been uh, changing the clock of VLC. So I'm going to explain a bit how it works. Who doesn't know what a PCR is? Really? That, that few? OK. Um, so PCR, for those who don't know, is basically the clock of the encoder, right? So in VLC, because VLC was basically video and client, which was just a player for a UD, UDP multicast stream in TS, is basically you need to a serve, uh, enslave, I don't know how you say in English, a um, your player to your actual encoder, right? So VLC, everything was done with the, uh, your main clock was your input. This is the right things to do for streaming. Unfortunately, it's not always the right choice. Uh, especially when you play audio that are local to your file, that means that sometimes um, you're going to resample while you don't need that. Um, because, for example, your clock or your input is not, are not in synchronization. Um, so that has been the design since uh, 1998? Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, that was a joke for a long time, like, oh, you cannot touch clock.c because you die. Well, um, here we have some very people who are courageous enough and they destroy the input uh, clock.c. Um, so how does a new clock work? And that's the interesting part. So you have a main clock, um, which is basically um, based on the monitoring clock of your CPU, right, uh, of your OS. That doesn't change a bit, right? But basically what happens is next to it you have one master clock and multiple slave clocks. Um, the master clock is basically the one that is going to give its timing to the main clock. And the main clock is going to basically do an affine function on the, on the monotonic clock and decide that it's the main clock. And all the slaves are just going to ask how to convert the PTS to real time. Right? So each slave clock are just going to ask the main clock, well, I need to this PTS, when do I wake up, right? And the master clock is just like, oh, I did that, I did that, I did that, I did that. So, um, what is the main use case, right? In many situations, um, basically, the new master clock is going to be your audio output, right? Uh, because you don't want to resample your audio, uh, because it's a lot of CPU to get good quality. And also, most of the time to play, basically, your normal local file, you have <coughs> um, But it could be your SDI output card, because SDI is even worse than audio for synchronization. If you <coughs> want to know more about that, ask Kiran, right? Um, but it could be other stuff. The master clock could be, for example, a network like SyncPlay or NetSync from the old M player and old VLC days, where you're basically going to ask someone else on the network to provide you uh, a new clock, and you're just going to synchronize on it. 
Uh, this design allows basically you to choose. We're not going to ask our users to choose. We're going to be clever. Uh, no, we're not going to use machine learning to know which clock you should use. <laughs> no, I'm saying that because I'm sure someone had the idea. <laughs> and then the slave clock is basically most, most of the time either video or subtitles, but it could be anything. And of course, it can still work with the input PCR, the clock, so we are not destroying the normal and main use case of VLC. Okay? What do we gain? First, we have new code that we understand, which is good. And we even wrote a doc, like, like an actual architectural documentation. I'm not joking, we even have designs and graphs that never happened ever, ever. So what do we get? Well, the new clock is mostly at the output level, right? So we can have more or less frame accuracy, not, oh, I'm taking the input clock and then adding the PTS delay to, to be more or less at the output, right? We are going to be frame accurate, which means that we could have SMPT, E, those horrible time code displays. Um, that means most of the time no audio resamplings when we don't need that. Uh, better synchronization, better support for SDI, etc., etc. If you care about VSync or HMDs, you will get that in a better way. Um, I think Nathan asked me for them whether we were stupid or insane to do that now. Uh, I think it was insane, yes, but should work. Um, the branch is ready to be merged, so it should be merged soon. Media library. Um, so it's happening. Um, so the, my slide in for them said basically coming to desktop. It's actually coming to desktop and iOS. Um, so the, RP, the, the module has improved. Um, the library that is still C++, 14, 17, 20, I don't know. I still go. I, I, I call it not, uh, on those C++ numbers. Uh, it is run in a VLC module, and the VLC module is used as a C API by the core and the UIs. Um, so it's quite simple to use. Um, we have uh, UIs that are mostly connected to it. Um, it has, of course, audio, video, playlist. Um, it's quite stable and quite light. Uh, it can index, of course, your local content, but it could, and it can also index any of that any content that VLC could index. So we've been testing, uh, for example, SMB, um, but it could be NFS or FTP or anything else. Um, and of course, if you scan something that is um, a distant share or a, a USB stick, if it's not present, it's just going to know to keep the data, but just like make it gray or something. Um, so it works quite fine. Uh, most of the patches have been merged to the to VLC branch, so we agree on that part. Um, and now maybe a bit of performance tweaking, but it should work. Last time we tested, it was doing around 1,000 MP3, MP3 scanning on an almost high-end uh, Android device on with one thread. So that was okay for for passing. That's um, so. Then related to that, there is UI questions, right? So this is one of the uh, ideas we have, which is a WinRT port. Uh, the desktop part is going to come maybe closer to that. Those are uh, screenshots from designers uh, about stuff that we are discussing uh, for, for the desktop UI. Um, I see some of you, and I know most of you don't want that, right? Uh, you're just like, oh, no, but never. I'm just using command line because I like, uh, I'm a lead hacker I'm using Linux, right? <laughs> don't worry. Um, if you start from the command line, or if you basically double click from your Explorer or Nautilus Finder or whatever you you use, it's just going to launch VLC, just a player. So even less than what you have now, so it's going to be like even leaner for just a player. And the media library is not going to initialize. So you don't need to care, it's going to be fast if you don't want the media library, no worry. This is um, the integration that was done by uh, Sumin during the G summer of code. Uh, so that's the same code on iOS. Uh, where you have exactly the same, that is, uh, the same media library um, working in the same way. So, what have we not done on the, my first slide? Video output is not merged uh, yet. Um, maybe we're going to do that for 4.0, maybe we're going to postpone for 5. I don't know, we'll see that this afternoon. Uh, Wayland is actually working. Well, at least in a way that is more stable than state of zero. Uh, I'm not sure that Wayland is stable anyway, though. Um, and I don't know exactly what is the release schedule for that. We'll see this afternoon. But it would be nice that uh, it would be 
closer to one major release per year and not one every three, five, two, seven, two, three years. And the one that uh, was easy to fulfill is blocking all platforms, so I confirm that we are blocking quite a few platforms. Thanks. Do you have questions? Yes. What about Android? Android what? Like, is it going to get better? Oh, so the question is, is uh, Android version is going to be better? No, um, we want it to be shitty. <laughs> um, I would advise you to go to the talk uh, from um, uh, Geoffrey this afternoon about that. Um, yes, we're working quite a bit on uh, performance on Android uh, and on the UI on Android. But do you care about anything special? Uh, yeah, the UI. Yeah, so the UI is getting done, especially on the Android TV. But if you have like inputs uh, or stuff you want, please tell me. Steve. How do you plan to, plan to use blockchain in the... <laughs> yeah, this is a real question with uh, IPC. <laughs> Okay. Um, uh, I have a, a special question for you. Um, is it just blockchain or blockchain and machine learning? In the cloud. It's better if you have both, but I'll take blockchain. Um, so for the blockchain and VLC, we have like two ideas. The first one is encoding with the blockchain so that you can distribute your encodings on the very and then check on the blockchain. There is another one, which is basically DRM on the blockchain, because you're going like uh, um, uh, ultraviolet with blockchain, like so you can actually register the rights and send your right to someone else, so your player can pass the blockchain to check if you actually have the rights. And the last one, I don't remember what the last one was, um, something about storing a full video codec inside the blockchain. Um, <laughs> uh, about machine learning, uh, no, I don't know. Uh, maybe. Yes, video recognition. Okay, Hadi, do you have an actual question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does, does the Great job looking at clocks again. But does the uh, does the CPU clock frequency ticker that you monitor get affected by frequency throttling by temperature and have you guys tested for that? No, I haven't tested. Uh, you mean the AVX 512? Not just AVX 512, right? In general. Even in general, was... I've never seen any problem so far. But um, that could be possible. Um, we have a few Intel engineers in the room. You should ask them. Any talk with any precedence that you would give with temperature? If it's not under control? I mean, from a VLC standpoint, it shouldn't matter, right? Uh, maybe if uh, VLC on the SDI output or if we play 2110 or stuff like that, then maybe this could be a problem. But compared to where we're coming from, it's not yet a problem. Yeah. So the question I did, a bit I didn't quite understand is, how do you make sure you don't resample audio? Like, how, how do you make sure you don't have a tiny, tiny fractional drift that's like one divided by one point, a million zeros, point one, and therefore resample that? Um, How have you redesigned VLC to avoid that case? So what is happening is basically we are putting as much data in the audio output as we can, right? Uh, and based on that, we know how much, how fast it's going. It's at some point, it's not completely failsafe. At some point, we might resemble the audio, uh, and that might happen. But for the main use case, it doesn't matter. Um, it's not like VLC has a big issue: is that we have too many users doing too many different stuff and pleasing everyone is difficult, right? Um, but one of the markets, sorry to say, like to speak of big words like that here, uh, but some of the markets we need to kill is uh, those professional video players that cost 2,000 bucks to do stupid stuff. And basically the only thing that they have is frame accuracy and except time coding, so, and we need that. We need frame by frame and we need back frame by frame. And as long as we don't have a correct clock, we will not be able to do that. Any other question? Yes, the next the next small release of VLC will have David in. Yes, this one. Uh, yeah, what's the status of uh, fuzz testing of VLC? Because I know that that had been ongoing last year. Um, we still have the machine, uh, the Zorin massive thing is. 
Uh, it's been first quite a bit. I think uh, we need to activate a bit more. We need to discuss that uh, this afternoon at the PLC tech meeting. But it's, we've done a lot, and 3.0 is way more stable. Oh, crushes way less than 2.2 because of that. Um, now most of the crushes on 3.0 are inside drivers. So that means we're doing something good. But I think we need to do more fuzzing, and that's an interesting topic. Yeah. Anything else?